Good day, everyone. Paul Keeley from EcoBuilt Passive House. Now, you're probably asking yourself right now, what is a passive home? I'm standing in front of one, and we're gonna show you all the passive features that make this house passive. Let's go check it out. You know, before we go inside, we need to point out one really cool feature here. This project is actually two houses in one. You can see there's an accessory dwelling unit attached to this side of the house. Behind all these green boards of zip sheathing, you have a secondary passive home accessory dwelling unit. Now let's really go inside and check it out. We're gonna do a quick walkthrough of the house, starting here in the living dining kitchen area. Immediately on my left, we have an office area. Next, we have the secondary bedroom in this two bedroom plus office house. And this bedroom has an interesting feature. Number one, it's designed accessible. So wider doorways into the bedroom, wider doorway into a connected washroom. This washroom is also connected to the main entry of the house. Walking through this entry, this actually leads to the accessory dwelling unit. But coming around here through the kitchen, the master bedroom is located on the far side of this plan. It's about 150 square feet in the actual bedroom area. And there is a open closet ensuite washroom at the back of this bedroom. Walking into back into the entryway, this is the mudroom utility room combined as one unit and it is connected to the accessory dwelling unit with a breezeway in between. So walking through this breezeway, this will be a conditioned space. We have a door into an attached garage, conveniently located between the ADU and the house. And now being in the ADU, 350 square feet in this area, there's about 175 square feet compact kitchen dining living space. And into the back, we have about 120 square feet for closet and bedroom space. There's a washroom as well, a door out onto the side of the home so that someone could be in here and really feel like they're in their own space. Now, what is a passive house? What makes the house passive? It's a house that only needs to be heated in the extreme cold or cooled in the extreme heat. Now, being in the north, Canadian passive home naturally will have windows where possible facing south. And when we do that, the windows allow enough energy into the house in the wintertime to reduce impact on the heating system. A house only needs to be heated generally when it's below minus five to minus 10 degrees Celsius. If it's sunny outside, the house will naturally be able to heat itself. Now it's September standing in this living room. You can see the shadow on the floor. It's almost midday. So the sun comes part way through the living space. September is not the hottest time of the year. When it is the hottest time of the year, June, July, part way into August, the sun only comes in approximately one to two feet. And this is essentially why maximizing glass on the south provides an opportunity for the home to stay cooled as much as possible with limited solar gain during the summer months. But alternatively, in the winter, when the sun is at a very low angle, that sun comes right through the building and reduces demand on the heating system. So you might be wondering how much glass do you specifically need? Approximately 35% of glass is usually a minimum in this southern wall to really reap all the energy savings benefits of a passive home. Another important feature of the passive house is high performance windows and doors. These are triple glazed passive house certified components. The difference between a code triple glazed window is equivalent to approximately an R4.5 and a triple glazed passive window is equivalent to approximately an R12. Vacuum space is in between the glass. So the window is actually separated into three parts. 
there's an interior frame, there's an exterior frame, and then there's a thermal bridge component so that there's no pathways for heat in the wintertime leaving the home or the summertime coming into the home. Did you know that most standard code triple glaze windows, the frames are not insulated? So insulated frames are a big part of the passive window, thermal bridge free design, vacuum spaces in between the glass, and also low E coatings put on all faces of the glass themselves so that they in turn further reflect the heat energy back into the inside of the home. And all these components working together are all reasons why a heating system in a passive home doesn't necessarily operate every day of the winter, only when it's required. You might have noticed the thick ass walls, super insulated walls. This wall in particular is 20 inches thick. There's R75 insulation in the wall. This house has just been insulated. The cellulose, the cellulose is right here, R75. There's six inches of insulation in the inside wall, 14 inch, inches of insulation in the exterior wall. You know, a passive home really is built like a thermos and a lot of insulation is a big part of keeping the home comfortable. Air tightness, arguably the most important part of a passive home. We say arguably because it's sometimes controversial talking to a conventional home builder, which we'll get into later, but the air barrier. Behind this black house wrap, there is a fiber board, which you can see here, which is the airtight membrane. It's a structural product. It's a rigid product. Rigid products are very easy to seal with tape. This fiber board also self seals for, through all nails and screws. Also very important, you know, that this fiber board is open permeable. Open permeable moisture, any potential moisture that's left in the wall or the roof system from construction needs to be allowed to escape. Open permeable characteristic of that airtight membrane, you're protected if you build a passive home because it's a prerequisite for the design. So the controversy is that a house needs to breathe and it can't breathe if it's airtight. And that's simply not true. A passive house is easily able to achieve both air tightness and breathability. You know, much better that the house breathes through a mechanical fresh air machine rather than through a leaky building envelope because it keeps the home healthy, keeps toxins outside of the building, keeps moisture, damaging moisture outside of the building envelope and creating a highly oxygenated environment not just breathability, but a healthy indoor environment, easily done with a fresh air machine, which most codes require anyway. So how much insulation goes into the roof system in a passive home? First, look at the space above the windows to the ceiling on the inside of the home. Now look at the space from the window to the top of the underside of the overhang on the outside of the house. That's the entire space of the roof system. In most areas of the northern United States or Canada require approximately an R100 for low energy. And if you move south, anywhere from an R40 to an R80, depending on how close the home is to the equator, will dictate those R values. Now, lastly, heat recovery ventilation. How does a passive house breathe? So a passive home breathe, actually any house should breathe this way. You see these pipes up on the wall. Those are supply and exhaust pipes for the fresh air machine. Through the ERV system, you can manage oxygen level, carbon dioxide level, which is your toxin. So get rid of the CO2, bring in as much oxygen as you want and keep the home in a relatively comfortable humidity range, 40 to 60% you have the ability to create your own healthy environment. We hope you enjoyed this tour. We hope you learned a lot about Passive House. If you wanna learn more, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us for more.